Hello, it's Camille, and I am here with Thomas. And Hi, Camille. Hello, Thomas. We're just going to chat genealogy today, I think. <laughs> yeah, I think so, yeah. Yeah, yeah that so should be also good. the whole the whole come down from the uh, root sack experience. <laughs> so yes, yes, let's yeah. <laughs> Figure it all out. Awesome. Yeah, wow. we will. I, Thomas, I know who you are now, but I did not know who you were a year ago, two years ago. Okay. And all last right. year, I, I don't think I've ever told you this, but last year was my first time presenting at Roots Tech. And I went to walk okay. into one of the presenters room, like the presenters room. Yeah. And I saw you sitting there and I was like, he's like so big in genealogy. He scares me. I'm going to go somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> so I went to find my mom and I'm like, she, I told my mom yesterday, I'm kicking myself. I should have just walked up to him and said, hi, he's the nicest oh, sure. guy ever. So oh, I'm yeah. so approachable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you're not the first one. I mean, I, there are several people and I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's social media or internet. It just, it just tends to make, I'm just a normal guy, but yes, it makes me are. seem larger than life. Yes. You know, and and I don't know what I don't know how that happens. I do not foster it. I have nothing <laughs> no, to do with don't. it. No, no. So no. Yeah. That's awesome. Anyway, let us know in the comments, those of you who are watching, where you are joining us from. Um, I know Thomas is from Chicago and I'm right. here in Idaho. So nice and cold. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Places. No, actually, it's 52 Fahrenheit here. So oh, that's scary. nice. I don't even know how warm it is yet here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Check. So, so why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, I grew up in New York, in upstate New York. Uh, I was born in 1962, so I'm a baby boom, boomer on the tail end. Uh, and I grew up in a really isolated community. Everyone thinks New York, and they think Manhattan. Right. You know, all of that stuff. <laughs> but I grew up, I mean, we had to drive, you know, 20 miles to go get major items, uh, 40 miles to get a washer and dryer. Oh, wow. Uh, it was, yeah. it was really, it was the poorest county in New York State. Uh, and unfortunately, in the 70s and 80s, New York City dumped a lot of their, you know, drug addicts and <laughs> anyone they didn't want in the city, they dumped in our county. And uh, so, at age 17, I couldn't wait to get out of there. Oh, I, really I bet. Couldn't. You were like, see ya, yeah. peace out. Yeah. Yeah. So I went to uh, college at the George Washington University in Washington, D.C. And uh -huh. uh, after about six years, then I moved to California. Lived in okay. San Francisco, 18 years. Uh, met my husband in 2000. We've been together 21 years coming up. And, uh -huh. uh, and he grew up here in Chicago. So oh, cool. that's what that's why I'm here mostly. And uh, he's Greek. Uh, if you know okay. my big so Camille, you know my big fat Greek wedding. Have you seen the yes. movie? Oh yeah. That's what I that's what I married into. So <laughs> remember, remember that Greeks invented drama. I keep saying that every day. <laughs> Greeks invented drama. So but uh, it. no, it's it's a whole it was a whole different culture twist for me. I mean, yeah. I grew up like the the white boy, 99% European, New York, Dutch, and English, yep. and everything. And then to be thrown into this, this you know, Southern European culture. Oh, my it's gosh. It's totally it, different. It is, yeah. Yeah. yeah so. <laughs> but that's about where I'm at right now. You know, and in awesome. terms of business-wise, I've been doing this professionally for about, I'd say, 11 years. I've been doing genealogy 44 years. I nice. started as a 14-year-old boy. Uh, yes. As a teenager, watching the miniseries Roots in 1977. Okay. Yep, and that's where I'm at now. So, yeah, awesome. So, how did Roots um, inspire you to go into family history? Well, it was it was a combination of things. You're probably way too young, and uh, but the thing is, realize that we just came off of the bicentennial in 1976. Yeah. Uh, if you go and you look at when did genealogy society start, it's all in the early 70s and mid 70s. A lot of the U.S. genealogy societies yeah. started. Uh, I will tell you that libraries and archives were not prepared for the number of people showing up saying, hey, I want to find out, you know, my genealogy, my family tree. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, I get so. 
it's funny, uh, Camille, I think about it, but I started when there were no computers. Yeah, uh, right? There was no ancestry. Uh, yeah. I was using microfilm and yep. sound decks and pen and paper. And then gradually you just went your way. And I remember AOL and Prodigy. I would I get so excited when someone would you answer one of my Yeah, exactly. But <laughs> they'd answer one of my queries. Yeah. About maybe my Crandall's in Rhode Island or my Freers in New Paltz. And then you progress to the next one would be Ancestry in the mid 90s. Uh, mm -hmm. Family Tree Maker. I brought. I bought that from yes. Broder Bun Software. Oh my goodness! Uh, yeah, or Banner Blue. Banner Blue. It might have been Banner Blue. And then you know, and then we came into the two thousands. And about two thousand eight, I joined Facebook. Uh, I waded my way through social media. I still don't like Twitter. Uh, I still don't like certain platforms, but I will use them. Yes. And uh, my family thinks I need a Pintervention because I spend way too much time on Pinterest. <laughs> and uh, yeah, but no, it's 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 been really neat in the past 20 years to see how genealogy has changed. Yes. You know, yeah, that is that's a new yeah. view. Yeah, especially for yeah. us younger ones. I, I found yeah. out that I'm not considered a young genealogist. I am over 30. Uh, so. No, <laughs> oh, that's that sort of stinks, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's that stinks. So, but yeah, I'll, I'll still take it. But um, yeah, there the it's progressed so much. Like I, I have I, I got all of my grandma's genealogy, and I keep finding pages of letters that her right. aunt and great aunts had written her and. Uh, my great grandpa was really into genealogy. He would drive down to the family library or like the genealogical society in Salt Lake and yes. sleep in his car so that he could mm. do research. So yeah, yeah, and I have all of his notes. They fill up the briefcase that I have. And I'm oh my like, gosh. I don't are I they don't written are they written in notebooks? Do how are they, his notes? Tell me about his notes. How are they written? How how do you preserve them? Um, I have not preserved them yet. I just got okay. them last year. Um, they are literally all just handwritten. Okay. okay. He's grabbed whatever paper he could find. Yeah. Yeah. Written on well, the back. that was. Yeah. If you grew up in the depression, you know, oh, you just yeah. you didn't waste That's anything. So. What I so what is your? So let me ask you because this is this is you know a big challenge. Uh, yes. Because Melissa Barker, the archive lady, is writing about mm -hmm. this tomorrow. Okay. Uh, how do you how do you start a family archiving project? A lot yeah. of people think it's totally overwhelming. So okay. if I were to ask you, what what are you going to do with those handwritten notes? Um. You have I'm, a plan. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to start. Is, is it written going... out or is it up here? <laughs> the plan. Right now it's up here. So my my first. The first thing I did was every, so I, my grandma passed away. I got her whole office. We literally just threw it into boxes mm -hmm. and tubs. Right. And right. then, um, yeah, I'm on this, Liv says I'm on the spot right now. Yes, I am. <laughs> anyway, and then we moved. And so everything went into a storage oh, unit while we I built our house. That. And I'm just yeah, barely okay. getting everything out. Okay. So, so if you, if you want a recommendation, I have a recommendation on how to yeah, approach this. Let's hear it. So I think the first thing you need to do is sort through and usually what I do when I inherit something is I do triage. I look for things that are really breaking down. Those are number one priority to scan and preserve. Yes. So if everything is pretty much the same, what I would do is I would start first scanning those items. Oh, front that's what I do, scanning. I need to write yes, that down. scanning. This way, if anything happens to the, the, the originals, yes. you have a copy. Uh, and then what I would start looking at is getting uh, maybe page protectors for each of the documents. Okay. Uh, just uh, all of them are acid free. Do not buy the ones that say archival. They can <laughs> use the word archival and like mark it up 25%. So, right. but yeah. the thing is, yeah, you need to preserve these items. And then the next thing is, I mean, if there are letters in that, guess what? You've got to transcribe them. Transcribe them. Yep. I make sense. And what do, you, what do you think is the best way to do that? Oh, I just type them up. Is that what you're meaning? No, don't type them up. What? Just read them out and have something else write it down. Aha! <laughs> uh -huh. Microsoft Yay. Word. 
Microsoft Word and Google Docs, they both have a dictation okay. operation. So I could sit here with my mic, and this is what yeah. I do, is I, I read the letters because I'm old and I have arthritis and I don't want to type everything. You don't want to but type the thing me. is, now you go ahead and you read it and it will actually take the voice and transcribe it into text. That's awesome. So, so a lot of people are worried about, oh my gosh, I've got to transcribe this whole letter or this whole diary. Uh, but you can do it with the newer tools. So I love yeah. that. And and this is perfect because that's the class. I watched your tech class on Roots Tech yes. and it was right. awesome. I loved it. Right. Right. I loved it. Yeah, that was that was that was neat. Tips that are fun. Yeah, yeah. So the thing is more and more uh you have to understand because of, I mean American society is dealing with its accessibility issues more and more. So yeah. Microsoft and all of these are doing things. I know right now when I use PowerPoint to teach it does closed captioning, live closed oh, captioning wow. based on my voice. That's a new feature of PowerPoint. That's so awesome. the thing is, we need to start taking advantage of these to like yes. do our transcriptions and, and, and make these programs work for us. We should not have to type all this stuff. So I love that. I love that yeah. suggestion. Thank you for that. Yes. And so then what? this is it. This is the last thing, Camille. Yeah. So you've transcribed it and everything. And what are they mostly? Are they just notes and worksheets? Um, yeah. So these ones are just notes that he had from the family history library. Okay. Like things he's okay. pull off of micro and okay. stuff. Do you, do you think that you've already covered most of that research and it's already? See, that's the question. I don't know. Okay. Because <laughs> I mean, it's back so, to like the 1700s, so, 1800s. Yeah. Oh, so. yeah. 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 So we've got two things here. Uh, left to do is you could decide, hey, I'm going to go through my tree on family search and see if any of these clues can patch in things. Uh, and then the other thing is you could donate those worksheets to the uh, to family history library. Yeah, they have a do really they good. have a donation form. They have a donation okay. form because this is my rationale, Camille. You've yes. already scanned them. You have the yeah, digital I have image. Them. Yeah. Why do you need the original? Why don't why not put it with someone or someplace that can safeguard it, right? Yes. Yes. That's the whole idea. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, yeah. donating that there. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's how I feel about a lot of the things that I got from my grandma is she she did not like digitizing things. I put a picture of her wedding up on yeah. family search because it was the only picture I had at the moment of my great grandparents. Right grandpa who had passed away and she lost it who put this picture wow. up here blah, 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 blah. and i'm like me <laughs> and so, so is your grandmother still alive is your grandma so alive no this yeah they, they've both passed uh, away yeah this one just passed I'm away sorry. And so, i'm just curious that, as to, yeah go ahead oh i was just gonna say that 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 was my plan was grandma as soon as you good. pass away everything's going up on the internet i'm just letting good, you know <laughs> So I wanted to ask you, what what do you think your grandparents would think about this whole deep nostalgia animation oh. of photos that my heritage is doing? Um, you know, my great grandma who raised my grandma, she um was a single mom for most of her life, right. and she would sacrifice to buy film. I have. Mm -hmm. So many pictures of my grandma when she was younger. I know it's a treasure, wow. and I love all the pictures. But um, I think that she would love it because she loved yeah. the pictures. She loved looking at them. Um, she right. continued to constantly take pictures. My grandma that she learned it from her mom, right. and so I honestly think she'd love it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's been pretty amazing. I mean, I there is a creepiness factor. I will let you know. This is your. <laughs> this is an exclusive, Camille. Yes, let's my hear heritage. It. My heritage approached me three months ago about this technology. Yes, and I and so what they went they went ahead and they animated one of my second great grand aunts, okay. and I was I was freaked out. I was <laughs> yes. just I was freaked out because here is a woman I never met. Mm -hmm. You know, so I'm also working on an article. There there have been several. I mean. Let me tell you what I found out today. The MyHeritage app is now the number one app in the iPhone store. That's so cool. 
Yeah, I, I because because CNN picked up the story about the whole animating photos. So yeah. I think what we need to deal with at some point is the ethics of animating dead people. Yes. <laughs> no, I, yeah, yeah. No, no it's, it's it, very true. It's very, very it true. Is. I mean, it is. People have put their own pictures up there. Right, and right. How far is that going to go to fake right. news? And the other and thing that, that, that I brought, that, yeah, deep fakes and everything, because what if yeah. someone could take my, or take my grandmother or my mother and put her in a situation where she never was, yep. you know, digitally. Yep. The other one, not to be Debbie Downer here is, uh, because I was a victim of sexual abuse and it was a family member, if I animated that member, that would bring oh, up a that lot would of stuff for me. Yeah. yeah. That and, and so this is what I told my heritage. I said, yeah. these are the issues that you're going to deal with. And uh, so, yeah, I think the next step is, you know, I run the group Genealogy Do-Over. Yes. Uh, probably we're going to do a poll in terms of how people feel about the whole like artificial that. intelligence and yeah. does it does it have value in genealogy because this yeah. past weekend i will tell you people were crying they're saying you know i never met my mother she mm -hmm. died in childbirth and i just it, saw her it's movie. Um, right it's amazing yeah yeah so yeah yeah which i think is awesome like yeah there there's people that you haven't seen for years all of a sudden right. moving right. and um i think it it brings the millennials into yeah. wanting to learn about oh, yeah. these things. Oh yeah. And yeah. yeah. It's a video yeah. for them. It's it's right. interesting. Everything is everything is video and TikTok and short attention span theater as I call it. <laughs> you know, it's five second bites. And so this whole deep nostalgia is perfect. Right up their alley. For it. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. The yeah. other thing that I've been dealing with is, you know, they come up with 10 different animations. Yeah. And I think it's based on uh, probably the gender, the image, uh, the time period and everything. But there's no guarantee that that's how my ancestor would have acted. Yeah. Yeah. People need to understand that. Yeah, you know? exactly. Yeah. I put my grandma in there and I knew my grandma very well. She's probably my favorite ancestor. Like I loved her. Right. and. I was like, oh, that changed her nose. No, that is not my yeah. grandma. Like, yeah. It yeah. was not my and grandma. And so, I think what it is, Camille, it also depends on how the person is situated, yeah. the angle. Because I feel I uh, some of my mother's wedding pictures, uh -huh. I was like, oh no, it, it cut it sort of slid yeah. the neck down. It did weird things. Yeah, or so, like changes the angle of the chin and yeah. Right, right. So yeah. I think it's gonna be that whole trial and error thing and figure out but of course it's new technology too we have to understand that you yep. know so yeah yep. awesome so you mentioned that your husband is greek i had a yes. question about that have you sure. done his genealogy or is yes he i have his own nope he doesn't do anything on his own <laughs> no no he's called the greek prince you have to understand camille uh i make his <laughs> breakfast every morning I pack his nice. lunch every day and I ask him what he wants for dinner at night. And I said, you know, you're the Greek ward cleaver. You know, you're living in the 1950s. <laughs> leave it or so. But uh, Greek genealogy, I've actually written a guide for Internet Genealogy oh, cool. Magazine. Uh, it's, awesome. There's some things that are difficult, some things that are make it easier. The nice thing is the Greeks always have a strict naming convention for oh, okay. the children. So my husband was the oldest male, so he's named after his father's father. That's it. Oh, okay. And That's then it. no if, if what, the next, no so if the next one is a boy, then it's after the mother's father, and okay. then it goes through that. And the there is never a junior or senior in Greek culture. Okay. Be, because it's considered bad luck to be named after your father. Yeah. The only time that I found that it works is if the father has died while the mother is still carrying the child. Oh, okay. Then, then, and it makes then it easy for genealogy. For ge right, but for genealogy, oh, the son is named after the father. Well, the father must have died, you know, and, and so he, then I'm yep. out. So and in a way, it the makes- The birth certificate. Yep. Right, it makes it so much easier. And yeah. also a lot of people don't understand with the uh, the long names like Metropoulos, mm -hmm. Poulos, yeah. Poulos will tell you what part of Greece they came from. 
Oh, that's so, so the, cool. The ending, the ending, unfortunately, the ending almost always gets truncated when it's single sized. I have yes. so many uh, relatives named Metro that their last name instead of Metropolis. Because they lopped yeah. off the, yeah, they dropped, they just, it, it made it easier. It's also that whole assimilation into American yes. culture. Into yeah. American culture. Yep, exactly. How did yeah. you, so how did you find out I did ge Greek genealogy? Well, you said it at the beginning of it. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I think we had a conversation a few weeks ago too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think so too. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I love those tips that you just shared of how you take the heritage or the traditions and you right, apply right. that to your research. Right. So we got connected officially through um, the 21 day connections project. Yes. Connect. Yes. And so we've been doing genealogy boot camp. So how have you felt helping us break it down <laughs> into smaller steps? Yeah. No, no, boot camp boot camp is great. And I think a 21 day is it's 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 ideal. Uh anything in genealogy, you've got to approach it in small bites. Oh yes. And that's or what it comes get down way to. Overwhelmed. No. Yeah. You know, you wind up starting at 10 o'clock at night, you're hopping on the Ancestry and you're drinking <laughs> your cocoa and you got your fuzzy slippers on. And the yeah. next thing you know, it's two o'clock in the morning. Uh, yeah. You haven't been tracking anything, source citations or links or anything. And then you wonder why the next day you're frustrated because you can't find that document. That so. you swear you saw. I think sometimes exactly. you about them. <laughs> Those documents yeah, yeah. Up. So yes. the thing is, I, this is why I've been trying to advocate a better method. I mean, I'm not trying to, uh, I'm not trying to slow down, but this is why I like boot camp. Uh, yeah. The thing is, I don't want to slow down the pr process. I think you, you and I both know Camille that when you get new new beginners or newcomers, they want to find you know this, this, and this, and they have this whole punch list yes. going in, and they're missing the journey. Yes. Yes, that's what it is. They're yeah. missing the journey. And I find it's it's um, it's not a scavenger hunt. It's not you're yeah. collecting all the toys, you know. And we have to we have to get that across. That yeah, you honestly a, don't know what's out there. It's just no, about the journey. No. Yeah, yeah, it's the journey. There's a purpose to it. Uh, there's uh, for me, it's a higher calling to do yes. it. And yes. the thing is that if you're if you are rushing, because I just uh, posted an article. Uh, based on the song, Slow Down, You Move Too Fast. And it was a song in the 60s. But the thing is, is that when we move so fast, we just don't see what's around us. Yeah, and, and I don't think you appreciate your ancestors when no, you rush no, really fast no, and you're trying to figure no. this stuff out. Yeah. yeah, so if you're going after those facts, then you're really not putting flesh on the bones. And that's exactly. what I want to do. I yes. want to put flesh on the bones. I yeah. want to know, you know, this, this, my one aunt uh, who was killed by a runaway automobile in the Bronx in 1925. Mm -hmm. I still don't, I still don't know anything about her life. <laughs> and that's the sad part. Part of it also, yeah. it's, it's Women's History Month. And I think that in genealogy, women get very short changed. Yes, they do. Uh, I mean, we've <laughs> seen, I've seen some trees where the women just really aren't researched. That's it. Yes. You know, and uh, yes. so I wanted to bring that up, too, is that that's what we're seeing more and more. And yeah. still, for everything I found out about the accident, et cetera, I don't know who Anna McPhillips was. <laughs> and which is really sad. It's really sad, yeah. you know, that here is this woman that died at age like 38 and had two kids. And I know nothing about her life. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Like it's, um, it's, I'm a Papenfuss. I'm a Mika. I'm like, you're proud of that surname, but that comes right. from a male's generation. Yes. And it comes down that right. way. It gets passed down. Whereas like I am from all these women who have different last names who are hardly right. ever mentioned. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's, that's the hard point part. Yeah. yeah, and I think one of the other things that I'm focusing on for Women's History Month is also uh, women's work. I think women's yeah. work is highly discounted. I mean, we're talking Ladies' yeah. Aid Society. We're talking Relief mm -hmm. Society. Uh, uh -huh. and, and the thing is, just because it was volunteer doesn't mean it's not work. 
right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We, yeah. We've learned that on the 21 day connections <laughs> experiment, just because yeah. we're volunteering does not mean it's not work. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. But also work. when we go back to look at, especially what our women do, our, our female ancestors, I think traditionally, you know, it's, it's sort of poo pooed as it's, oh, it's not real work. You know, it's yeah. volunteer stuff and uh, it's, it's social, it's women all chatting, you know, but when you go and you look and thankfully there's a whole record set, you can go out to Google books or the uh, digital books on family search and yes. look for all of these things. Like the groups that women belong to Eastern star, Rebecca Lodge, all of those. Yes. I mean, those were, it, it wasn't just a social club. These women no. did real things. So yeah. Well, and you look at like uh, Daughters of the American Revolution yes. and Daughters of the Utah Pioneers, right. their main core is volunteering and yes. doing right. good for the society, reading to kids and helping them learn to read. Yeah. And that's important. I think, unfortunately, the media has an idea of what a lineage society is. You know, yes. a bunch of old <laughs> ladies sitting around drinking tea. And uh, and so and but but the thing is, I have to give credit to D.A.R. A few yes. years ago, they really started to turn things around in terms of how they wanted to be depicted. And I really right. appreciate what they've done. And I think we need that more and more in genealogy. Yeah. You know, I keep saying this is not your grandmother's genealogy. This exactly. is what you what you <laughs> and I are doing is not what these no. men and women did in the mid 70s. It's not. Yes. Okay, I'm being told there are questions in the feed, so we better okay. address those. Let's find them. Oh, perfect. There's one. Okay, I see you're doing a genealogy escape room for the Ontario Genealogical Society tomorrow. Is yes. It's the bubble wrap one. <laughs> it is not the bubble wrap one. Okay. It is a brand so new it's then. a brand new one. The brand new okay. one called the the bootlegger's wife. So <laughs> <laughs> it deals with prohibition. It deals okay. with Canadian, Canadian U.S. borders and the way that liquor was treated uh, yes. during prohibition. A lot of people, Camille, don't realize that Ontario's prohibition started, I think, almost two years before the U.S. Yeah. So they got a dry run and they knew how to set up all the, the ways to get around it. Yeah. And so when the U.S. passed, I mean, they were ready. I mean, I was laughing so hard the other night because I saw a photo of a boat parked out in Lake Erie and it had a price list for everything that you could buy for liquor. Oh, that's so, awesome. Yeah, <laughs> a big banner. It said, you know, rye, a bottle of rye is, you know, 50 this cents or much, whatever. Yeah. I, oh, yeah. my God. Oh. Well, yeah. and it's so, so interesting through doing this research, you learn about this history because I was doing yeah. some California research in right. I think San Francisco and I was looking yeah. at some deeds and the law on the deed, like you had to sign this for this deed was yeah. you couldn't make, sell or store alcohol on the premises. And I was like, whoa, 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 what? Was it, was it a winery? Was it a winery, Camille? Or? No, it was a house. Okay. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Because yeah. I do, I do know that that is how a lot of the wineries, like Krug, all of these, they got by with sacramental wine. Oh. Okay. And that's that's how they got through the prohibition. Also, uh, medicinal purposes. Right. Which is exactly. Yes. Broad. Yeah. yeah broad. Yeah. But no, I just about that because that's a lot of a lot of Italians settled in Sonoma County, like Sebastiani Winery. Yeah. Uh, Gallo, Gallo in the Valley. And so they were the ones that really excelled in making wine. And I do know that during Prohibition, they wound up having to do sacramental wine and just to make yep. it through. Yep, exactly. Yes. So tell us more about your escape rooms. Tell so us about this, them. How do you set them up? The whole, so this is the whole idea. So let's say one of the things that I really like, uh, if you've ever seen Night at the Museum, have you seen yes. the series of movies? Okay. Oh, yes. Ima so imagine that you're a genealogist and you're trapped in the archives. You know, Perfect. somehow, somehow Sister Wilson forgot that you were there in the back on the third floor in the family history library and she decided to lock up. And, uh, and so what, and you have a certain number of steps, problems to solve in order to get out. Yeah. That's have the you, whole idea. Um, there's a library series where 
they have to get out. I want to say it's Mr. Yeah. Anyway, it's a cute, cute series. Yeah. 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 So yeah. That's what I imagine. When right. You explain so basically that. what yeah. I've done is, is I go through a series. I ask a series of questions for so the bubble wrap. The bubble wrap was perfect. It was January 25th. It was a day. It was, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, yeah. the invention was announced and, but people didn't know who these two men were. Created, so, yeah, it, so yeah. basically I did the whole thing as I would have done for a client. I would say, okay, uh, I need his birth date. Where was he born? Uh, this, the other inventor was important because he was born in Switzerland. So there's okay. a whole nother twist on this. And yeah. uh, no, so basically then I set up a Google form. Google Docs has an ability to create a form, a fillable form like a survey. Yes. And then the results the results get dropped into a spreadsheet. Yeah. And so one thing that I did wrong, I will tell you this. <laughs> uh, I did I did data validation. So basically, if someone typed it in and I felt it was incorrect, they couldn't get to the next step. The okay. problem is I didn't realize that there were many different interpretations. Like someone's wife was Rafaela. Well, there was with one L. There was Raphael with two L's. And so, so, so I wound up having to turn off data validation because a yes. lot of people, rightly so, were frustrated. They're yeah. saying, I looked at the death certificate. It said Raphael, and this is how it was spelled. So, yeah. Yes, but there no, are, it's, it's, it's fun. So, Camille, think about a scavenger hunt. That's oh, yeah. basically what we're saying. Awesome. But I try and do these really off, off the wall clues. I love it. That's because awesome. the thing is that when we go to a death certificate, we're so focused on cause of death, death date, yes. that we don't look at everything else. Exactly. Yes. Right. So yes. that's so if you're going to succeed at the escape room, you really need to be good at uh, noticing uh, things on the document and then uh, actually putting that into a to-do list and documenting things. Awesome. So. And going through yeah. it. Sweet. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, what are Michelle, the questions? Have, yeah. What's the other question? Do you have one, Michelle? She's on our back end running our comments. Thank you, us. Michelle. <laughs> oh, she's thinking. Well, while she's thinking, okay. um, oh, there we go. What's your favorite genealogy find in all of your years of research? I think it's my second great grandfather's citizenship certificate, oh. Matthew McGinnis. It's from 1889. It's huge. Uh, it's been folded many, many times. But that is that is the one thing that I really like. The other one That's is I have cool. this, and also I have this over here. This is a 1946 condolence certificate signed by Harry S. Truman. Wow. Or my cousin my cousin was killed in a plane accident in Lakeview, uh Lakehurst, New Jersey. Okay. So yeah. so I'm working on I have scanned this, of course. Uh of course. but I'm also working on preserving it. Uh I guess these were common. There's even a serial number on the back. Whoa. And that's, that's cool. that is my next thing is to determine whether two things. Is this an original uh, signature or is it auto pen? Exactly. You know what auto pen yeah. is, right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. So I would think that personally for condolence certificates, a president would sign it by hand. Oh, I mean, yeah, I would you know. think so, yeah. Uh, but then I also want to know what what does this serial yeah. number mean? Does it go yeah. to what, his... what does it connect uh, to? Right. And you do know, uh, Camille, the issue with the uh, military records for U.S. about yes. the fire in 1973. Yep, the big old fire, so I, yeah. think, I have a feeling that I'm not going to get very far with that serial number because I, I know, think it so pertains steep. to records that are just kaput. Okay, we had a question about the audio pen. Auto pen. Blah. What is auto pen? Oh, auto pen. Okay. <laughs> auto pen has been around forever. Can you imagine the president having a sign thousands of documents a day. Now, Camille, did you know if you have a uh, if you have a ancestor that filed a patent, the patents had to be signed by the president. Oh, really? I mean, some of the early patents has like Madisons and it, it's That's wild. Cool. It's yeah. just wild. So the thing is, yeah, so what they came up with is this auto pen and basically the the president signs and then it mimics that hand motion. 
And that was done for Christmas cards, for condolence cards, for whatever. And uh, also, I mean, can you believe there's a web page all about presidential signatures? Oh, the other so cool. one is the other one is I guess several secretaries figured out how to sign someone's signature. <laughs> so yes. there's a whole yes. there's a whole group of nerds nerds <laughs> I I say that and they're like oh no that was what's her name signature she was yep. faking his signature oh my gosh yep. yeah yeah they know Crazy. those signatures I my husband's yeah. a sports fan he knows his signatures oh yeah oh yeah 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 and you know there's there's room for for a lot of faking and a lot of uh, -huh. uh you know there counterfeit is. yeah yeah so yeah I always thought that the presidential signature thing was, yeah, and everyone thinks that auto pen is more modern. I think the auto pen was first used with FDR. Yeah, in the thirties. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't too far back. Um, yeah. we have someone who was close to Lakehurst, so you might have oh. to chit chat with her and see if there's oh, yeah. local knowledge. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Okay, Michelle asks, do you have a favorite record that you love to find or what is your go-to record? My favorite records, if I can find them, are marital discord ads. It's where the husband took the ad out <laughs> saying that basically he was sick of his wife and he was not going to be responsible for her behavior or her finances. And the best part is if the woman took out her own ad like the next week, Oh my gosh. Yes. And but the we thing is, you know, the drama. right. Exactly. It's like Jerry Springer 1815 style. It's I crazy. It. But the thing is, as much as we laugh about this, what I what I do say is there's a reason that these ads are in those newspapers. Yes. So the first thing is that women, unfortunately, were property. So yes, a man had to he had to post notice, basically. Yep. The other thing is, why would a woman Think about it. What would a woman take out her own ad a week or two weeks later and air all her dirty laundry? If she could prove abuse or abandonment, she could get an accelerated divorce. She may have kids that need to be taken yep. care of. She yep. wanted to win the community support. Exactly. And so that's what the battle was going back and forth. Yeah. 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 I think those are the favorite records when I can that find them. That's cool. I haven't oh, found yeah. one of those yeah. yet. Now I'm going to go look yeah. for that. <laughs> yeah. I love it. So do you just look that up in a newspaper or? Uh, yeah, actually, the thing is, there was a formula. It, uh, okay. So if you look it up, the ads usually said, uh, left the care and comfort of my bed and board. Uh -huh. uh, you know, and so there were certain phrases because these were common in newspapers. The publisher yeah. knew. He said, yeah, yeah, yeah. So and so they broke up. Let's go ahead and run the ad. And uh, <laughs> but there was a formula because it was a legal statement. You had to say it a certain way. You had to say it a certain way. You know, yeah. Yeah. you had to say it a certain way. And so they're not called, you can't find them on marital discord ads, but usually you if you look at, you know, the left. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And there are some hilarious ones out there. Oh my oh, God. I bet. Crazy. Oh, I yeah. Bet. Yeah. I'm yeah. going to have to look those up. Okay. We had another question from Olivia. What is your favorite class you've ever taught? Uh, they're alive, searching for living people. I know okay. it sounds like it's heresy to say that as a genealogist, I want to find living people. No, I but, love finding but, living people. Yeah. Well, the thing is, why do you like finding living people? Oh, my gosh. They've got treasures that you don't have and they have knowledge right. that you don't have. Right, 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 right. A lot of people discount yes. that. And that's no, also that's why that's favorite. also why Camille genealogy is a small town and treat people with kindness and compassion because yes. you never know what they're sitting on. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. uh, I mean, my, so my grandma kept everything. I have pictures of her friends. I have pictures of random people. <laughs> and, right, like, right. I, and I'm trying to find those people so I can attach it, like on Family Search. I'm trying to attach yeah. it to them. Well, and, on yeah. Monday, this is what I did. I posted, there was an article this weekend in CNN about a Purple Heart medal that yes, a woman who worked that. in a thrift store and she yeah. took it upon herself. So the, actually there are groups that do this. It's called, uh, I don't know if it's uh, heirloom re reunification or whatever. Something so like that. Yeah. So the original question was, what is my favorite class that I teach? Yes. It's called yes. searching for the living because what I do is I show two case studies where uh, I had heirlooms 
that I was asked to try and find oh, wow. the family. So one oh, cool. was, this is a classic, uh, and we're okay on time, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, we're doing too. Yeah, so this is a classic in Oneonta, New York, upstate New York where I grew up. Uh, yeah. This bookstore I, I owner. I've been to Oneonta. Is that where you're oh, from? Oh, Oneonta. Uh, a little yeah. bit south of that, yeah. yeah okay, yeah. yeah, I've been to yeah. Oyanta. I've spent the night. And what I is the breakfast. department store? The department store is Boscov's. Oh, I don't store. know if I went there. Yeah. <laughs> and there's also a there's a AAA minor league team now in Oneonta. That's yeah. exactly why the, I went. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. I was playing there. <laughs> That's Very so good. Very good, yes. yeah. Okay, so, keep going. Yes, but the thing Oneonta. is, so, so this is, all took place on Twitter. Okay. In a matter, in a matter of two hours. We were able to take what happened is a carton of books came into the bookstore. Okay. This is very common. Donate them. But there yep. was a 19, there was a 1926 baby book in okay. the carton. Yeah. And it was filled out for someone that was born in Watertown, New York. Her name uh -huh. was Marjorie Pauline Frost and all this information. So the owner of the store on Twitter said, can you help me find the family? Because they're thinking that, oh, they cleaned out this woman's house or she went realize. into assisted living. And yeah. it's very common. You wonder, yeah. why do these photos wind up at flea markets or rummage uh -huh. sales or boot sales? But it Because they're not labeled. You, they're not labeled. <laughs> People aren't tracking them, things like that. Yeah. So you will not believe it was an hour and 45 minutes. So we found the niece that wow. had dropped off the carton of box of books. Yeah. And she said yes, that got in there by mistake. That's and awesome. uh, but Mar and Marjorie had already passed. So we weren't sure oh, whether okay. she passed. But the thing is, it was it was it was amazing. And the way we did it is we had to go through and research uh she never had children. She had a child at age 17. And this woman had a really rough life. And then she gave it yeah. up for adoption. Oh. So uh and then she married three times. And you wow. want to know the creepiest thing? Do you believe oh, no. in genealogy serendipity? <laughs> Let's hear it. Do you? Do you? Yes. Do you believe in like yes. the Okay. So oh, here yeah. I am. Re I'm researching this poor woman. On her third marriage, you want to know how this husband died? The department store blew up. It blew up and he killed him. I mean, <laughs> anything that could happen to poor Marjorie Pauline Yeah, Frost, happened. it happened. Oh, bless her heart. It did. Yeah. Yes. So. Yeah. So the weirdest thing was, is I find this article from 1945. I'm trying to prove the death date of her father. Yes. And he was killed in a bar fight in the town where I grew up. Whoa. I mean, that freaked me out. That freaked yes. me out of all the places. I mean, there was a newspaper <laughs> article and everything. I said, yeah, here I am researching this. And it, it can't be like, and, yeah. it can't be Binghamton. It can't be this or that. No, it's got to be the hometown where I grew up. Yes. And her, her father was killed during a bar. Fight. Wow. And that was also part of the tra tragedy. I mean, then they had that's to move. Crazy. And yeah, yeah. So. Wow. Yeah. Well, that's cool. Getting these heirlooms back to people, finding out things from them. Yeah, right. it is very important to find those living relatives. That's it why is. I loved um, Relatives at Roots Tech is yeah, I, yeah. I messaged all my second and third cousins on my mom's dad's side because I don't know much about them. And I'm like, I want to hear your stories right. about your great So did you email, you emailed them or did you use ancestry messaging I or used family messenger search? messenger on family search. <laughs> what did you use? The messenger I on didn't... family search. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, just so you know, it's hard to document those things. Oh, yeah. So what, yeah. what I do is I, I write my thing out in Word, and I'll usually save it, and I'll say this is the date, this is the person I'm emailing, yes. or sometimes afterwards I'll copy the message and paste it in. This is, I mean, this all comes down to that digital uh, that we're leaving that we don't pay attention to. Yes. I mean, what's going to happen? I, I get hit by a bus. This is one of the scenarios we joke about, my husband and I. <laughs> what if Thomas gets hit by a bus? So, and no, I have a binder. I oh, have yes. a whole binder. Oh, yeah. It's got Good. all my recipes. It's got all my passwords, my recipes, <laughs> everything. Recipes. So, those are yeah, important. All my, they are. They are. So, yeah. So, the thing is, though, I mean, you want to have some continuity to this information. And uh, yeah, I think it's really important. Yep. 
Yep, it is. Yes, yes. Awesome. Okay, we had a question. What is your favorite connecting activity? Mm, lately? Instagram. Yeah. Instagram. Instagram? I am addicted to Instagram. Yes. Instagram. Okay. Yeah. It, the thing is, it's where the millennials are. And I'm able to have conversations about, you know, certain record sets and things like that. So yeah. I think Instagram, uh, it's hard to connect, but I just think that, that it's, it's the way to pull in the younger generation. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So how are you connecting on Instagram? Uh, I'm posting things. Well, I have this weird thing. Yeah. Where I post like a weird holiday or an anniversary every day. Yes. And uh, yeah. And uh, so today there was a suffragette march in 1913, I think, in D.C. Okay. And so so I posted, I put a graphic. To me, it's sort of educating people. I, I think that we don't understand the events that our ancestors went through. Yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah. And uh, it's funny because my great my grandmother, my great grandmother grew up. She was born in 1894 in New York, Lower East Side. And yes. I'm thinking, what did, what did she think of the, remember the uh, shirtwaist triangle fire in 1911 where all these women died in the garment yeah. factory? I mean, yeah. she would she would have been basically, been about 16 or 17. She could have been a girl working in that she could have been there. factory. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And what did she think about it? And that's one of my regrets is I don't asking. have her around to ask those things. Exactly. I know. So, yes. Yeah. I have those regrets too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The thing yeah. is though, this is what we need to do, Camille. If you do remember a story from your grandmother or great grandmother, yeah, please put it in fixed format. And this is what I do. I sit there with word and I dictate it through Microsoft word yes. and down at the bottom. I said, uh, I say family story as told to Thomas McKenty by Therese McGinnis Austin. I, I give it a rough year. And yes. that way, that way I have a record. I've created a record based on yep. my brain dump, based my brain your, dump. Yep. Yep. Right. And I think we I need to that. do that more. We need to do that more and more. Yes. Yes, we do. So. For sure. Yeah. 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 Um, my, so we love going to the library with my kids and they happen to pull out this baseball book about that happened in the Japanese constant, the camps. Oh, way right. Back the in uh, the uh, internment, internment. Yes. Internment yeah. camps. That's what it is. Yes. yes. And um, there was one in Idaho. It's actually a, yep. uh, a monument now. And um, I, right. I had great plans to go there. Thank you. COVID. Yeah. Yeah. We'll make it one day. Anyway, my mm -hmm. we at the time were living with my in-laws and great grandpa was there and he mm -hmm. was in World War II. And right. I said, Nolan, my son, Nolan, go ask grandpa if he knew about these camps or what was going right. on. And it was right. so cool to hear him tell that story. He did got you guys record? Did you record it? I did. I did. Okay. I did record Good. it. Yeah. Good. Yeah. But he so how old, are you, how old are your kids? How old are your kids? Um, nine, seven, and four. <laughs> okay. They're a little bit too young, but one of the books that I was required to read in high school was Farewell to Manzanar. Yes. Do you remember the book? Yep. I yep, yes. read that one. Yep. yep. And so make sure, make sure that they're in route for that. And yep. because it was a real eye opener, you know, it is. and, uh, yeah. and also if you know, George Takai, George Takai from Star Trek. Okay, he was yes. Zulu. He oh, okay. has written a Broadway play called The Legions. It's oh, okay. he was incarcerated. He was incarcerated during World War II and his family. Yeah. So it, yeah. so the play Allegiance, and there's a book out about it, but it it tells the whole thing. These were these were our own citizens. Right. You know? And yeah. hardly anyone knows about it. Like I, I only knew about it because of that picture book. And and I've I've read it multiple right. many years ago. But yeah, that yeah. that picture book was so important to yeah. bring yeah. up and now the uh, other thing the other thing, Camille, you may not know during World War One, you know, basically it was Germany, but there was a big ship culturally here. Cincinnati renamed all of its German streets. Uh, oh, sauerkraut, yeah. sauerkraut was called Liberty Cabbage. Uh, that's how we came <laughs> like up. It was right, right, right. But also yeah. hot dogs. They used to be called Frankfurters. In uh -huh. fact, my great my great grandmother still called it Frankfurters 
but yep. during that whole time. And so you have to put that in syntax. I also, one thing that a lot of people don't know for a record set, the full three has for free FBI files during World War One. Okay. I didn't know and that. Several of my German ancestors. Yeah, several of my German ancestors were interviewed by the FBI. Oh. Because I'm neighbors would turn up. them in. Yeah. Yeah, neighbors would turn them in saying, Oh yeah, there's a German lady who lives down there, blah, blah, blah. So yeah, it's really wild. Because my uh, my great grandpa and my great great grandparents came from Germany right before World War uh, yeah. One, maybe. One. Anyway, yeah. yeah. They were yeah. in World War Two fighting yeah. on right. the United States. So go, yeah, go to full three. Go to full you have three. To look and look that, that up. up. Yeah, a lot of people yeah. also they have they also have UFO files at full three. Just yes. Like we'll check that out. UFO <laughs> files. I love that. Yeah, my, that. my my ancestor dropped out of his spaceship. So <laughs> I uh, love it. it. It's just I love how genealogy brings history that you learned about in school to life. I remember yeah. doing when I was in elementary school doing a um, biography or, or uh, you know, a biography report. You had yeah. to pick someone to write about them. And yeah, I yeah, did this yeah. Bill Ball. And I remember oh. Jamestown, New York. About, Jamestown, New York. Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I remember having questions. Mom, they, they're talking about communists. They're saying that she was a communist. What is that? Mm -hmm. What? You know, and I remember. And so you learned about McCarthyism and. Yeah. yeah. Learning about them. Uh, basically telling her she wasn't a good citizen because she right. could have been a right. Yeah. And it, it just, it yeah. boggled my mind at that time yeah. and still does, but it's yeah. so fun learning about that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And the thing is, the sad part is, I mean, you probably learned a lot of this in school, but my fear is that, you know, kids these days are not getting the same history education that you and I got. Yeah. You know? Uh, in a way, they're getting a better education. They're not they're not going through the same old traditional filter, you know, yes. in terms of civil war, reconstruction, everything. They're, yeah. they, they, they look at every facet now in school. They look yes. at different angles. But the thing is, I think some of the things that you and I learned, they're just not being taught. No. Well, and there's so no. much more history to learn. And right. That's got to take time. And yeah, yeah, it's hard to know yeah. what, uh, and I try with my kids and family history is a great way for me to do that is being like, well, did you know yeah. that grandpa lived through this? And right. then we'll talk about right. it. And so that's so, fun. So Camille, if I can ask a question not to put you on the spot, do you homeschool your kids? I don't. Um, okay. They, they've been for, since this, the fall to now to yeah. last week, yeah. they were, going to school for three hours a day and then they were home for the rest okay. of the day. But okay. this Monday okay. they went back full time. <laughs> Yay. I know. In fact, that's remember, where they're at right remember, now. Remember when Staples would run the commercial? It's the uh, most wonderful time of the year <laughs> for buying back to school supplies. It's yes. The time yes. Best time of the year. Yes. Yeah. But totally. uh, really, this is, this is one of the things on COVID and, and what we're talking about here, folks, is social history. I mean, basically, 100 years from now, they're going to say, how did the U.S. education system change because yep. of COVID? We're going to yep. go to year-round school. That's it. Year-round oh, yeah. school. That's it. Yep. You know? I mean, there's so many things that, uh, in a way, I don't want to say that COVID was a blessing, but here's one for genealogy. We fought for many years to have certain societies do webinars, and yes. they went kicking and screaming. <laughs> And guess what? A digital thing. And then they didn't have a choice. Yep. And so I was really impressed at how many of these societies ramped up. I think the benefit was many of these people are going to church or synagogue on Zoom. Uh, yes. They're participating in other meetings on Zoom. Yep. Uh, and so it was easier to adapt. But, yep. uh, but I think when, when all is said, done, and written about COVID 100 years from now, uh, people are going to realize how big an event this changes the social fabric oh, yeah. of American life. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sure. yeah. 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 And, and I think that's also why we started this experiment was back when COVID started was right. There was no connecting and people no. were starving for this connection and to have these ideas to be like, Hey, come, come do this. 
with your family right. do this with your family right. and on zoom and have a little talent show it was right. it was so crazy to see people go oh that's an yes i never thought of that i should do yeah, that exactly. yeah so yeah. It, it's been fun to see them try to make those connections right Oh, I love Sorry. it, Deborah. Deborah said, "No, you're totally fine." Deborah said, "Totally a silver lining of COVID." Yes, there is. Yeah, it is. It really is. Uh, I call it a golden lining. I'm no longer <laughs> settling for silver lining. Seriously, We're going I think gold, with COVID, girl. no, seriously. <laughs> yeah. But I think that I think Camille. That's one of the things is is that we need to really it look for those opportunities right yes. now. I mean, I yeah. can't tell you how many people approach me every week, and I'm really happy. They want to start their own genealogy business. Yes. I mean, and when you think about it, think about the Great Depression. A lot of the corporations that started today, that are around today, started in the during. depths of the Great Depression. I started yeah. my business during the recession. And yeah. so, and, and history shows that a lot of people start a business when the financial times are dire. So yeah. I think that's also another thing that we're going to see. But uh, no, there's been a big explosion in uh, in genealogy in terms of people wanting to do this at home to yeah. do this professionally. Yes, yeah. yeah, it's been fun to see that. Um, yeah. Monique said that she's been able to attend more genealogical institutes in the past year than she normally would have. Exactly. Yeah, SLIG, yeah. Uh, GRIP, the uh, Genealogy Research Institute of Pittsburgh, uh, mm -hmm. Samford in Athens, yes. Georgia. I mean, the and, and you know, I'm, here I am approaching 60, and <laughs> I don't travel as well as I used to. Yes. It's really convenient. I don't have to, I don't have to pay for airfare. Exactly. I don't have to eat awful food at the airport, uh, <laughs> you know, all these things. And it yeah. just, it's, it's, it just saves money. Uh, yes, it does. So, yeah. 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 I love it. And, and for those people who are like in a wheelchair or have a hard time getting around right. for whatever reason, they mm -hmm. are able to attend these and learn. And I love right. that. Yeah. Right. I think yeah. part of the challenge is to, to, you really have to work hard in the virtual uh, education world and yes. replicate the in-person. When I teach virtually, I miss the nonverbal cues. I miss yep. the people shaking their heads. <laughs> exactly. <you know>? Yeah, <laughs> it's too. that validation and feedback. Yeah. And so, yeah. but, but that in a way there's- look And you're like, okay, I got to go a yeah. little bit more. I got to explain right. this better. That's right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And uh, so it's, it's going to be a process of getting used to it. Uh, yeah. But I, I think that's a big factor as well. Yeah. And I think that's important for participants to know and to realize is that we're looking for those cues as teachers and we need mm -hmm. those comments. Right. And write them in the comments. Right. Wait, I don't quite understand that. That's your facial cue to us right. is your questions right. in the comments. So well, I think this there's going to be a revolution about that. Yeah. Yeah. This is why I think that Facebook groups are really important because yes. uh, different than pages. I always yes, tell my different. students. My students said pages are one-way communication. Think of a megaphone. Yeah. Basically, that's what a page is. But a group is collaboration. A uh, group is everyone getting along and playing nice. And <laughs> but there's a lot of stuff that comes out of those groups that you know. Yeah, they're treasures. And, yeah. Yeah, and, and a well-run group, you should always feel comfortable posting a query. And no one yes. should make you feel less than or stupid, you Amen. know, because Amen. you asked that question. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I agree. And I think that our 21 Day Family Connections and your do-over group are great examples yes. of places you can yeah. come to ask questions. And there's plenty right. of people there that will help you. And yeah. Yeah. Because Camille, there. you and I, you and I all started, we started somewhere in the beginning, right? We yes, were new people, yeah. you know, yeah. I, you know, we, we fell into, we became the regulars, but you know how you become a regular is um, you hang out with the regulars and you yes. listen to the regulars and then you become Amen. part of that. Yeah. And I think that's really important, but we all are somewhere. So yeah, no one should, somewhere. no one, no one should be ding because they don't know this or this or this. You exactly. Know? Yeah. 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 And there's so much knowledge out there. How can you know it all? No, you can't. You know what the definition yeah. of an expert is? An expert is someone 
that knows what isn't possible, but it doesn't mean they know everything that's possible. So they can take one thing and say, oh, this doesn't fit. And that's, to me, that's the definition of an expert. An expert yes. will never know everything, everything about a subject. But they know where to what find it, it out. Exactly. How to make right. it work. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Okay. What is the name? It's on Facebook, right? Your do-over group? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead. And it's called the Genealogy Do-over. Okay. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and put the uh, the URL over here if I can find it. So <laughs> there it is. So. Okay, that'll be awesome. So yes, if you are watching and don't and aren't a member of either one of these groups, please yeah. come and join. Yeah, um, Michelle, it's in the private chat if you want to grab that. Okay, perfect. Oh, awesome. sorry about that. Oh no, no, no. That was that's perfect. That's exactly what she was asking for. Okay, so that's awesome. Yeah, let's get you guys there. Okay, so um, last we're out of time, unfortunately. I could talk. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> I still have many questions I didn't get to ask you. So. That's all right. We'll have to do part two. We'll there have to we do son, there we go. Son, son of Back to Basics. Yes. So, yes, yes. Yeah. so uh, what are your parting words for us? Finish it up for us. Well, I've been trying to emphasize the journey. I think that a lot of us, you know, we're pushing too fast. You know, we're only looking at the things that we want to look at. Uh, we're not taking the time to save those record images, yes. uh, to build a legacy, to document. Uh, I mean, we joke about family stories, but um, what's wrong with just taking your iPhone and turning on the recorder and exactly. saying, hey, can we record this? Uh, yeah. I, I think what, what, hap what it is right now is people need to take action and they need to feel comfortable doing that because yeah. these stories are not going to record themselves. No, they're not. And they're going to they're disappear. Not. After three generations, that's it. I mean, there's certain, yep. I'll tell you one story that I remember. Uh, <laughs> my great, my great grandfather said, yeah, he said, your great grandmother almost got shot back in the forties. And uh -huh. I said, why? He said, well, it was uh, July. It was in the mountains uh, where they lived and it was very cold. And my great grandmother decided to go out and pick blueberries in her full length mink coat. <laughs> and my grandfather thought it was a bear yeah. from the distance. So he gets his gun out and everything. Oh my! I, 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 this is why it's funny because they were city folk. They were city folk that retired from the country, and they keep thinking of Green Acres. You know, oh yeah, where they, Green Acres. Yeah, yeah, seriously, seriously. So only my great grandmother, very stylish, six foot one with auburn hair, would go yeah. out on a July morning in a full length mink coat to pick blueberries. Yes, only yeah. only her. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so. Oh, I love it, I love it. Yes, don't let that one die. But, see, those good... are the stories, those are the types of stories. And so what I've done is, I mean, we joked about it as kids and I grew up yeah. with it, but I finally put it into fixed format. You good. know, I put it in writing yeah. and I then I have a store citation. A story. Yeah. Exactly, right. Awesome. You know? So, yeah. Yes. Write down those stories, document yes. what's going on, scan those images, those documents, whatever yeah. you have. Yes. I love it. And slow down and smell the roses. Yes, exactly. See what else you can find out in those documents. Yeah. I love it. Awesome. All right. Thank you so, so much. So we'll see Thomas. you next time. And Camille, yeah. my hair will be green next Yay, week. Yay. I'm so Saint, excited. St. Patrick's green. Day. Yeah. Uh, St. <laughs> yes. Patrick's Day. Yeah. Yes. All right. Thanks awesome. for this opportunity. I really appreciate it. Oh, thank it. you. Thank you for coming okay. on and helping us. You are amazing. Okay. So, All right. Thank you. Tom. All right. Bye.